Okay, right. <laughs> okay, right, I shall start. Greetings um, and, and welcome to anybody who uh, watches this short presentation on the post-World War II photo postcards uh, of Sarawak. Uh, as an introduction, after the liberation of Borneo in 1945, there was little need for picture postcards at all. Um, reca uh, reconstruction, repatriation, uh, shipping in of supplies, uh, shipping out of troops were all the things that were necessary. Um, and it wasn't until really 1947 that passenger shipping uh, was released from all of these duties and could be refurbished and used for uh, a slow return to normal travel. Uh, now, the first evidence I found of a picture postcards being used from Sarawak uh, was in 1950. And this is a card owned by a member of the society, uh, which sadly is not mine. Uh, usage of these photographs is actually quite rare during the early and middle 1950s. And the other interesting thing is we find no evidence of pre-war cards. Um, so either they were lost uh, during the war or goodness knows, but there, certainly at the moment, there is no signs of any being used post World War II. Of the new cards or photographs, um, two outstanding photographers are known and they are Limpo Chiang and K.F. Wong. There are unattributed photographs as well, and we have no idea who they were. Um, but Lim and K.F. Wong really contributed the bulk of the photographs during this early period, and during the very beginnings of printed coloured photographs, uh, postcards, sorry. Now, the earliest card I have is this one. Um, it's got a plain back and dated, post dated, postmark dated uh, the 19th of February 1952. It's a local rate internally within Kuching. A photograph of uh, a street in Kuching and no other information whatsoever. Uh, the second one is one at the bottom here. Uh, again, plain back. It's been divided by drawing a line down it and used as a postcard airmail, 40 cent rate. Interestingly, despite the fact that at this point the, the airmail rate was 50 cents. Since there's no receiving mark, it could well have gone by C mail. This is a, a photograph of the Aurora Hotel, again plain backed. This one is a photograph taken by K.F. Wong, uh, and we have here the copyright and a photo, Ku Ching. 15 cent rate, although in this case the rate had already been reduced to 10 cents, but somebody I hadn't told somebody, obviously. This is another photograph of the Aurora Hotel, and that seems quite popular, or it may have been that the postcards were available at the Aurora Hotel. Uh, again, plain back, uh, and in fact, there are two cards, both exactly the same. 10th of March, 56, 55 cents, ML rate of the USA, and 10th of June, 56, 40 cents, correct rate to the Netherlands. Uh, again, plain back, no information about the photographer at all. Now, of the two photographers here, Lim Po Chang um, is, is, is an interesting character. He was born in 1924 in Cebu. Parents, Chinese immigrants who've moved to Sarawak from the southern province of Fujian. Uh, quite a lot of Chinese moved during these early years. They were encouraged by the Raja to come in and take over many of the roles within uh, the shops and merchandising and banking and things like that. 
After the war, he went to Singapore to attend Seventh-day Adventist College. Uh, and his, that was where his love of art and photography was developed. And he returned home in 1950. Well, we're not quite sure. He returned home and bringing with him his first camera, which was a Rolleiflex, which he purchased in Singapore. Not sure of the date when he actually came back, but he was a founder member of the Cebu Photographic Club. And that was founded in 1952. Um, he started a career in banking, which um, it, it sort of suggested that his father was very keen on that. It was much more stable, but it really wasn't what he wanted to do. So he set up in business as longhouse arts and crafts, trading in antiquities and handicrafts. The business was located oh, at 19 High Street in Cebu. He also ran the longhouse photo equipment and photo supply business from the same address. Uh, he trips up river on buying expeditions for all his arts and craft and gave him a lot of opportunities to photograph the various communities. Um, and in his mid sixties, he published his only book amongst the Dyaks, which is a superb photo essay encompassing many of the indigenous groups and illustrating aspects of their daily lives. Now, Lim's early photograph stroke postcards are found like this. Um, they're distinguished by a straight line copyright Limpo Chang at the bottom. They have usefully a note of what the picture is all about and they're numbered. And we've, I've only ever seen a limited number of these, um, but what they're typical in Po Chang, they are very uh, naturalistic um, and they are very focused on people. Uh, the next one there, and here's two more, uh, uh, early ones of Dyax, uh, one numbered 44 and one numbered 51. Uh, the chap here is carrying a skull, which is quite was quite normal at that time. Um, after that initial straight line marking, uh, Lim acquired a number of rubber stamps. We're not sure what order they occurred in. These are three that I have got examples of. I believe it is suggested that there are at least another two different ones, uh, which I have not yet seen. Uh, in 60, 1962, he had an opportunity to go with the KM friend on a trading trip up the Rajang to visit a number of the Penang groups. And some of the photographs became cards. Now, interestingly, this is 62, and these are still plain backed, although not all of them. Some of them now are on postcard divided back paper, but they're still black and whites. Um, and here are a couple of Kayan photographs. Uh, he was quite well um, acquainted with quite a number of the Kayans uh, who traded into Cebu. Now, this is an interesting one. I originally thought this was a Chinese lady um, because there are no pictures of the Chinese community, um, either KF Wong or Limpo Chang, as far as I, we're aware. However, a member of the Kuching Society explained that this lady is a member now, and they weave these type of hats. And the fact that she looks very Chinese is due to the fact that there was a significant level of intermarriage between the Chinese and the Mela now. Right. Kaya, now we go to KF Wong. Now he was born in Sarawak in 1916. Uh, his rather father being a rubber planter. He appears to have had a rather peripatetic life, and there's a spelling mistake, but never mind. Uh, uh, twice Wong's father took them back to China and then came back again, uh, and eventually came back and stayed in Sarawak in 32. Uh, now Wong was very artistic from an early age, and his father was actually quite keen on him studying art, but he wanted to study photography. So in 1935, he left Sarawak um, to see if he could 
basically become an apprentice to a master photographer. Um, he went initially to Singapore, but ended up in Guangzhou in the Zigang studio. Um, the Sino-Japanese War Force flonged to, flonged to flee China, returning to Sarawak. Interestingly, he left his wife and children behind, um, but it's not clear why, uh, but that's part of uh, the story. Um, and he set up the Anna Photo Studio in Kuching. This was actually named after a famous Anna Photo Studio in China. The studio continued through the war. Um, he spent most of the war, I, it is suggested, photographing Japanese soldiers to send pictures home. Um, from around 1947, his, his photographs were beginning to be published in things like the Straits Times annuals. And he spent a lot of time recording political events, landscape views and portraits of important people, uh, particularly studio portraits. So he was very much a traditional classic portrait photographer, as opposed to Lim's very um, loose recording style. And he also started to produce postcards from the early 50s. Uh, here's a, there was one earlier. This is one of the churches in Kuching, uh, copyright and a photo. This we think is a bit later than the very early 50s because so somehow he's acquired a, a rubber stamp to divide the back. Now, originally all of the early postcards are black and white. Um, we assume this is because there was no facility for getting them printed. Um, and certainly it's not until sometime late in the 50s that we begin to see colour photographs emerging. Um, this is a Limpo Chang coloured photograph. It's printed, it, uh, it, Limpo Chang hang, uh, kept copyright on these early ones um, and it was printed in the USA. And this is dated the 28th of January, 59. Um, and this is an Anna photo card or the back of an Anna photo card um, posted again in 1959. So um, there's a just that cusp at about this time that we get colour photos. This is a colour photo as well, I hasten to add. Um, Olimpo Chang's quite interesting. He, there was an early series of colour photographs published by Olimpo Chang. And again, here we go. Photograph by Olimpo Chang at the bottom. Uh, all of these earlier cards well, once we get into colour cards, we always have uh, a description, usually on the back. Um, and Limpo Chang's started a series with the numbering SS1 to SS18. And there's a further group, SS61 to SS67, which are all so credited as photographed by Limpo Chang. This is SS1, which is the very first. Um, a colleague of mine has a black and white photograph of exactly the same group, but very slightly moved. So it's quite clear by this time that Lim was using, taking on expeditions to at least two cameras, one for colour and one for black and white. Uh, here are some more early SS cards. Again, typically Lim photographs of people rather than anything else. So SS2, 11 and 18. And here are the later ones, SS62, 63, 67. Again, it is always a, 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 an emphasis upon the ethnic groups and the peoples of Sarawak. And here, and a very short set he produced, again with this logo here, uh, numbered NB101 to 111. This is typical of them. This is the uh, Dyak musical duet. And then we move on to KF Wong. Now, KF Wong also started to produce these 
colour photographs at about the same time. There's no indication of where they were printed, but the best guess is probably, that, again, that it was in the States. This is a relatively small group, distinguished by the fact that the description, the descriptor is on the front at the bottom. Uh, a colleague of mine thinks that there are only about 12 of these in total, uh, 12 different photographs on this first group. We then have a subsequent group, which are unfortunately not numbered, and we, therefore we have no idea how many of these there are. Um, but quite a lot is the is the answer. These have the descriptor on the back. Again, uh, these are much more positioned and structured photographs than those of Limpo Chiang. Cleofon also supplied a series of pictures of the uh, Gawa Antu Festival to um, John Hind Limited of Dublin, who produced this set of cards, a set of cards, 2SWK, and then a number. I think there are about 10 of these. Um, not sure why uh, a company in Dublin was interested in producing these, but this is what they are. Right, now card publishers. In the early 1960s, it was the photographers who tended to publish the postcards, as, we, as we've already seen. Uh, but in time, the field grew and we see basically two main publishers. We have ASMK and SW Singapore. We still currently have no idea who ASMK are or were. But SW Singapore um, was Sing Wah and Co of Singapore. And they were certainly still publishing in the year 2000, as there was a another one of these books published at that point. Um, there are a series of these books um, covering places like Singapore, uh, East Malaysia, and some of the Malayan states. Um, and this is a uh, book, this book number nine. And quite a lot of the photographs in this book are also postcards. It may possibly be that they're all postcards, but we haven't found all of the postcards. Uh, these are typical SW postcards. The SW postcards tended to focus on scenes, buildings, mostly around Kuching. And here are two typical examples of, of SW postcards. Um, but they also produced a small series for Cebu, for Miri and Bintulu. And these two are from Cebu. Again, they're in the 1960s, although this one is posted much, much later. This is the one postcard I have of Bintulu. Um, I think I have another one somewhere, but I can't find it. And these are two examples of postcards from Miri. Again, showing general scenes. This one is 1973. So these are obviously later than the uh, than the photographer's postcards. Now SW also produced a number of these booklets. These are booklets of a booklet of postcards, in which case where there was a postcard and there is a stub in, under here with the same picture on it, but obviously in a much smaller size. And you could tear the postcard out. So postcards from these booklets are easy to identify because they have a perforation down the left hand side of the postcard. Um, we know there are a number of these but we don't know how many um, and they are very very rare to find nowadays. Sometimes you find just the stubs uh, which obviously people kept uh, but complete books and postcards are rare. Now we come to ASMK. 
uh, as I said, we, we have no idea who they were, but they did produce two series of postcards. The SS series, which was started by Limpo Chang and extended by ASMK. Um, this covers mostly Dyaks and other ethnic groups. And then there was a second set, the KS series, and these were mostly buildings, street scenes and views. And so this is these are KS series stamps, as you can see, um, the open air market in Kuching and a typical riverfront view. Um, the Aurora Hotel was another, again, classic photograph that had appeared lots of people. And here we have the GPO in Kuching. And that, I think, sums up a, a first pass at some of the photographs, early postcards of, um, of Sarawak. Thank you, Roger.